Hi there, my name is Jan Lassert and in this video I would like to show you everything I know about Webflow for beginners, the complete sort of crash course and overview of the designer and basically give you everything you need for creating your first project. As you know Webflow is getting massively popular within the dev and design community and is starting to help more and more people get into coding even though you are not really coding anything and that's why it's called no code. But there is still a little bit of coding sort of knowledge or sort of understanding you need to know uh, before you uh, will be able to create whatever you want. Uh, we will sort of dive into all of this. This guide is completely non-technical. I personally don't know how to write a single line of code. So take this as a complete guide from a non-technical person and let's look at what we will be covering today. First off, we will look at the basics. We will cover what even Webflow is. We will take a look at slightly what the box model is. We will take a look at the university. Then we will jump straight into the designer. We will look at all of the tabs, all of the different panels and everything. In the third part, we will cover the elements panel. We'll take a look at the most commonly used elements, which you need to get your hands on. And then I will give you a few hints on how to start your first project so you can start finally creating. And in part five, we will take a look at all of the amazing resources. We will cover some UI kits, courses, and basically amazing places which you can take a look at after this video so you can get even more advanced. So now let's take a look at the basics. So what's Webflow? In case you never heard about Webflow, Webflow is a visual web design tool. So basically if you are developer in Webflow, you're a visual developer. And it's a tool that translates your design decisions into production ready code. In other words, from non-technical point of view, think about it this way. If you are a designer and you currently know only Sketch or Figma or Adobe XD, we were usually ending up our work with some kind of prototype or you basically send your designs to, to the developer and he will be the one creating all the stuff. But with Webflow, this change and you're the one who is actually doing all the coding, all the visual development. And it's really that simple. You obviously still need to learn a few things, which we will take a look at uh, today, but it's really that simple. So from now on, once you learn Webflow, the whole process is basically client's idea, you design Webflow live working website. With that said, let's look at where to start with learning and how to add finally Webflow to your skill set. And let's start with the obvious one, Webflow University. If you ever visited webflow.com, you probably stumbled upon the Webflow University, which is amazing place filled with amazing videos, always on point, very quickly explaining super simply and really basically how everything works and every element works and how it can improve and help you with, uh, with your creation. I personally learned everything from these videos. So I think that's a pretty cool testimonial for these videos. That's why I think it has to be the first thing mentioned here as the place where to begin. The only technical thing which you need to learn and sort of get understanding is how a website works and how HTML works. And uh, that's sort of working out with a box model. And we will look at in the browser how this thing works. So what's box model? Box model is the CSS rule and it's the only one small challenge you will face in the beginning. In general, we are talking about how website works and sort of the understanding of it. Given that each block is consisting of few properties, which leave it placed on the website. As you can see, each text is wrapped within this blue line and which is sort of giving you understanding of where it's placed within the website. And that's in general how box model works. Every element is a box and in general you're stacking boxes below each other and you're creating the website. So this navigation is a box, this section is a box, this another content part is a box and all of these things are boxes. I'm not the best technical person to explain this. So it's the easiest way is to just Google it and take a look at what's box model. You will find this. This is box model, this is box model, but you want this one. This is CSS box model, where you will understand that each content is prepped inside a box and is consisting of paddings, borders, and margins, and that's how it's positioned on a website. Webflow itself has amazing video on, on this, which is hilarious, and is in a really nice way and simple way explaining how the box model works and why is it important in the beginning to understand how this thing works. And now let's look at where we will be spending most of our time, the designer, the interface, Webflow interface. So this is it. This is the interface where we will be going to spending most of our time and we will be creating our design. And there is obviously a lot of going on. There is a lot of panels, a lot of icons to click on. So let's look at, at the most important parts, 
which we will be using for creating our designs. So first off, we have the navigator. This is the structure of each page displayed as an overview of all the elements, such as divs, that's the square. Then we have text blocks, that's the square with T. You can here uh, expand and collapse all of the layers, or you can even pin the navigator so you can have it all the time uh, visible. Then we have panel number two, which is pages. Here you will find an overview of all of your pages and their details within the projects, plus options to duplicate and create a new one. So basically here you will be creating, here you will be making the structure. So here you can see a uh, folder called layouts and to display the settings of each page. So let's say we will take a look at the home. Here you can duplicate the page with using this icon and then set all the SEO optimization tags and basically give your page description, custom OG image, or even create some custom code into the head tag and into the body tag. Next, we have a asset manager. So this is a place where you have all of your images which you ever uploaded to your project. So basically everything is here. And then there is a one small trick, which I found out is that if you click on the settings and click on this arrow, it will show you the link where it's uploaded on Webflow domain. And you can use this to link, for example, to custom OG images, or even send this link to someone uh, with like a PDF and they will be able to access the PDF through the structure. So basically think about this as having a CV uploaded into the assets manager and then linking to this uh, with a button, for example, on your port portfolio with here is my CV and that will open the file. This is also a place where you can give uh, your image a alt text. That's also great for SEO optimization and you basically do it just once. And then once you paste it into your project, it will always follow the same alt tag. Then we have a style panel. So this is the whole style panel. This is everything you can do with each of the elements. So basically if we select, for example, this button, you can see that it's using the size 18 pixels for the text. It's blue, it's using a border and there is a hover, for example, uh, settings, which will then change the color to this one that's highlighted by the blue, which is overriding what was uh, previously said. The orange one is getting the properties from the previous uh, state, which is the, which is the default state. And most importantly, this is settings to all of the elements which are using this classes. Then we have element settings, and this one is only set to a one particular item. So this is really important. So basically this one is to all of the classes having button large with subclass button blue. This one is only to particular button. So this one, this button is basically going to a link to a showcase page to get the free UI kit in case, in this case, the Prospero UI kit. You can also link it to other page in the project or external URL or email or telephone or attachment. Next up, we have the interactions panel. So in this case, we have, for example, hover over the button. So once uh, you hover over, so this arrow will interact with these two other elements. This is the advanced part of Webflow, but frequently described as the most important Webflow magic a place to set up all the cool animations you can see on websites and transitions for your project. But we will leave this for now. You won't necessarily need it for your first projects. Then we have breakpoints. So this is where all the cool stuff is starting to happen because this in Sketch or Figma or Adobe XD is really tricky. You used to have always like a separate uh, canvas for a mobile design, but now you basically have just one design and then you're scaling it down and if Webflow is really helping you with this and you can also nicely preview all the different viewports. And then by this, you can also check for each of the, each of the devices and it's, it's, it's showing them in the bottom part. So basically this is for example, for iPad Pro. This one is for Galaxy and Kindle Fire and the same is going for mobile. So there is multiple mobiles for each of the, each of the breakpoints. So this is for all the galaxies 
and Nexus 6, all the way up to iPhones and Pixel and Google Pixels. And this is basically for all of the main parts. So this is these uh, six to seven panels are the most important ones. Then we have a preview here. So basically here you can check how it actually works in the in the browser without all the unnecessary panels. And then we have a CMS, which is here. This is for all the dynamic content. So basically if you, for example, creating a blog here, you will be writing it down and then displaying it with the code in the project. Then we have a project settings, which is accessible through here, through this gear icon, where you can set up all the additional stuff. So for example, favicons, set a password, uh, display it on showcase, add your fonts. Uh, so for example, here you can see that we are using work sense and all of this cool stuff. And the last bit, which we haven't covered is this part where we have undo button, redo button. We will see if everything is changed. So for example, if there will be a exclamation mark, you know that you need to wait until it's saved. Then we have an export of code, which looks like this. So you can download it through here to prepare the zip file. And then we have a read only link. This is if you're ever asking for support, you can send anyone the read only link and they will be able to access the whole code of your site and be able to play around, but without ever hurting your site. And then we have a publish, which is the most important part. So once you finish with everything, you press this publish button and then using this link or the custom domain link, you will be able to access your site. And it's just really that simple. You will just press one button and everything is live on the web. By now, you should be getting a sense of what all the panels do and what Webflow is capable of providing. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll be doing more videos about Webflow and design. And the next session will be all about portfolios, etc. And now we haven't covered one more thing and one more panel, which is the plus icon. And we will take a look at that right now in a part three, which is the elements panel. So this is the elements panel. The first time you launch Webflow, you will find a big variety of elements, which can be overwhelming at first. Some of them come with predefined properties such as navigation uh, to ease the learning curve. Some of them are tied to specific use, such as uh, the light box, such as the tabs. So let's look together at the ones used the most to help you navigate through them and uh, really touch on the basics so you can explore the rest later in the process. I'll be using a Prospero UI kit to demonstrate this easily. So the first one and the most important one is the div block. You will find it in a part called basic. Uh, and it's the main building element for every project. DivBlock is in general is a folder wrapper uh, which you'll use uh, to group and position all your elements. Uh, DivBlock with flex properties uh, will quickly become your best friend, uh, which we will easily explore here. So basically, this is DivBlock, this is DivBlock, this is DivBlock, this is DivBlock, and everything is basically DivBlock in this case. The most common layout structure which I'm using is to basically have one div block as a section, which is the full width. Uh, I'm using always some padding on sides uh, to make it nice uh, when it's getting scaled. So it's still keeping the, the sides. Then have a content, which is then set to the width. So basically if you're following some sort of grid of let's say 1140, so you will set it here as a max width and center it and center it. And then everything else inside is again, some other div blocks or a grid, which brings me to the next part. And that's the grid, which is a component using CSS grid in Webflow. And that will be really familiar to you if you're using any kind of grid in, uh, in your designs. As you can see, I'm always uh, trying to follow up the 12 column grid, which I'm using in sketch as well to easily match everything in general div block with flex and grid is the ultimate combination. And in my personal view, the most important building elements properties. The next one, which we have is a link block, which is used for example, for buttons. So this is a link block. You will use link blocks uh, if you want to have multiple things inside it. So a link block can actually be for a whole sections or only for one button, for example, using the arrow. So here I really needed the arrow inside so to make it with the interaction as we explained before. And that's why I choose the link block, but it can be again, easily used just with the text where you will just remove the arrow and you will have the button with a text block inside 
and you will be able to style it and have it as a clickable thing. And don't forget, all of the settings for the link block are within this panel of a link block settings linking to one particular item. So next up, uh, I'm switching to uh, Before You Shine project because it's easier for, uh, for the demonstration. Next up, we have the typography section, which is using uh, headlines, paragraph, text links, text block, block quotes, and rich text. Uh, I'm using all these five uh, block, block quotes are nice for a quotations because it comes with uh, like a line on left. Uh, but I think the most commonly used uh, are the headings, uh, which is for example here. Uh, it's using the SEO properties for uh, H1, H2, H3 to basically nicely structure uh, your content. So basically you can easily switch between different types of uh, headings. For example, here we're using uh, H1 for the main heading uh, and you can nicely go through the structure and here we're using H2. And once you go further down the page, we will be using H3, H4, etc. The one which I uh, wanted to highlight as well is a rich text, which is a great element if you're building, for example, block. And here you can see that one of the elements, that only one of the element called a rich text is basically handling all of the content filled using CMS. So basically, once someone writes an article, we will just use only one element, which is a rich text, which you will once style and then reuse on all of the other pages. And it will follow the same logic. And once you change one of the elements, it will also replicate the change to all of the other rich text with the same class, with the same class. Cool. We are back to Prospero UI kit. The next stuff which we want to cover is a form block. Forms are another important part of websites for all of the uh, contact forms for a subscription blocks, which we will cover right now. So basically here, the most important bit is a form block, which you will always put on your site first. It will come with a button and two fields, and then you can always add more into the form. And you will do that just by dragging uh, other elements from the form to your site. So for example, here you can see we've added uh, one more additional field for the message, which is a text area. You can easily add check boxes, a radio buttons, uh, select boxes, or even a capture. Next up in the elements panel, we have navbar, which is basically a menu, but it comes with nice properties uh, for building a responsive menu. So basically if we take a look at the before you shine project, you can see that we are using navbar, uh, which is the component for the menu. And if you go to settings, you can see that you can now do different types of uh, interactions than, for example, with only a div block. Uh, and you can display a menu icon for the menu. So basically, if we will go on tablet, we will have the commonly used hamburger menu and it's being displayed on tablet. If we will change this to only mobile, you will see that this is now displaying the full menu, which we were using on the desktop. The menu also comes with a interactions for the appearing menu with all the items. And it's sort of nicely working with uh, the stuff which you create on desktop and it will write it down to the responsive version. So the navbar component is really handy and it can save you a lot of time. One little trick here, uh, I found out that uh, some people don't know this, so I guess uh, it's nice to highlight it. You can always change the default menu icon, uh, which is coming from the, the navbar to match your brand and basically use any type of icon uh, you created as a designer or your designer created for you. Uh, and the easiest way is how to do it is that instead of uh, the default icon, which you will see if you drag a new navbar, you will just delete the icon and paste the replacement icon into the menu button. And that was basically it for the, for the main components. Uh, there are a few nice additional, which I, uh, which I would like to highlight, uh, which I sometimes use for some particular uh, examples or for some particular use cases. Uh, one of them is tabs. That's a great for displaying, for example, pricing. So you have different types of uh, pricing models. Then we have a light box in the components, uh, which is another really cool thing uh, when you're building some uh, for example, a photographic portfolio or basically trying to display multiple images for one project into, into your uh, design portfolio, for example, or for like an e-commerce 
project. Once you click on one of those items, it will display the other images linked to the link box. Then we have slider, which is awesome for like testimonials or for like a header images. And it comes with like a pagination and arrows. Then we have a collection list, which is one of the most important ones, uh, but it's sort of more advanced, uh, slightly more advanced, I would say like a medium level. Uh, and that's for all of the dynamic content and it's basically using the data from the CMS. So once you get your hand on uh, all of the elements, collection list will become your best friend because it will be filling all the dynamic content from the CMS and which is, I think, the most powerful part uh, of Webflow. To give you a little bit more context on collection list, uh, first off, you select a source. So for example, here uh, we, have, we have some uh, blog posts. Uh, and the, the cool thing is that it has three wrappers. The main one is where you select the collection. Then you have the wrapper, which is the main wrap, which is highlighted. And then similar to symbols in Sketch and Figma, uh, you can have you have only one collection item styled. And then the rest of them is following up the lead and filling the data from other source, from the CMS. So for example, here you can see that we have only one item styled, which is the blog post. And then the CMS and the collection is basically putting the content to the other ones. So here uh, we can easily add even more of those uh, blog posts if since we are now limiting it to only two. But if we will remove the limit, you can see that there is so many more blog posts already written and just by one of them being styled, all the other ones are displayed in the same logical structure. And the last element which I want to show you is a HTML embed. Uh, you will find it here. And that's when you know uh, some bits of HTML and CSS or JavaScript uh, or you found some snippets on forum or anything like that uh, and you want to add it to your site. So you paste here a HTML embed and then this will open a uh, embed code editor and you will be able to paste anything inside it. So for example, here uh, we have a uh, dynamic image uh, which is showing a different image during the night and during the day. So you can't even see it here because it's not displayed and it's displayed using the custom code. So we have here two images and the code is managing uh, the displaying of these two. As you can see here, currently we have the day image, but on this side, there is none visible because it's handled by the HTML embed. And that's it. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, we now know all the basics and where to find every element needed to actually start. And we will do that right now in part four. So how to kick off your first project? The easiest way how to create this is basically just create a new project and then go into a uh, project settings as we, as we know is a place where we uh, set up the whole project uh, to match your brand. I think the easiest way is always to first uh, import your fonts. Uh, we currently use a Visby and Greycliff for this project, uh, which we uploaded through here. You can upload uh, TTF or OTF fonts uh, or select some of them from uh, the Google fonts. Webflow is at first providing basically the whole Google fonts library, which is really neat. You will basically just select one and import it to your uh, to your project. Thanks to that, uh, they will appear here now in the in the fonts panel. So you basically have the default one and the ones which you uploaded. So we have the Visby and Greycliff here. The next thing what I like to do, and this is obviously optional, but I found it incredibly helpful when I'm moving designs from Sketch or Figma to Webflow, or at any point when I'm starting a blank new project, I always set up an additional page uh, called Style Guide and set all the default properties that comes with the project, all of the headings, links, list items, etc. This gives me a little power uh, that whenever I drag some element into the project, it will already be in the way I want it to be. So for example, here we can see how the heading one is styled, how the heading two is styled. And whenever I drag any of those elements into my project, they will be already styled in that way. You don't have to be worried. Uh, Webflow is providing really cool uh, example of, uh, of style guide. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. You can always clone this project uh, to your profile and start with that. It's, it's nicely following the same logic as I was saying. It's com it comes with a H1, H2, H3, H4 links, uh, text colors, uh, logo, 
it will have uh, also all the elements in place so you can just style them however however you want and then use them in your project one of the most important part uh, to highlight here as well and it's highlighted here is to style not the one element which uh, which i was explaining is with the class uh, but go here and select this one html tag for all h1 headings and this goes the same for links uh, so if you go here uh, remove this one it will have all links so if you click here you will basically thanks to this will be styling all of the link this is also how one of the style guide can look like this is from one of the templates on webflow uh, template marketplace and it's really cool and that was the style guide from here it's on you our imagination is limitless and only you know what you're trying to create so i can't guide you further uh, I've wrote down all of this into an article on Medium, so you can take a look at that uh, and go over everything which we, which we covered into maybe more details. There is also a list with all the links which will be in the next part, so consider uh, looking at this article. And now, uh, let's look at all the resources which I put together uh, and look at all the amazing stuff which is the community creating in a part 5 the resources and the best way how to learn even more is to try to check something pre-built and in this case the first thing which i would like to highlight here is a star templates and how to find them you will go to create a new project and then these three are starter templates they will offer a solution for a portfolio which looks like this you can then go even into the detail of project one with some sort of uh, explanation of the project. Then we have a business starter template with a about, theme, blog, and call to action. And then if you're trying to create some store or any kind of e-commerce, there is a e-commerce template as well. So where once you go here, you can buy awesomeness for $50, which is pretty cool. I actually developed these as well. So feel free to reach out in any case you have any questions about these. Uh, on that note, there is a whole template marketplace with a couple of free templates uh, that you can also grab to explore and try to learn more about it uh, and try to understand how others uh, build their projects. I also did one video explaining all about these new starter templates. Uh, I will try to leave the link on the video or if I won't be able to figure it out, uh, I will leave the link in the description as well. Next up, we have the showcase. Showcase is another amazing place to explore and to see what others build. Uh, showcase is a place where you, other creators uh, can display their work or you can actually display your work as well. And sometimes uh, the creators actually make some of these available for cloning, uh, which you can access through here. So clonable tab. And then the easiest way is to just click on most liked because those are the most fancy ones and where you can actually gain some, uh, some really nice pixels or some nice structures uh, to, to explore. Cloning uh, is a process where you basically, as we, as we already learned with the style guide, uh, you basically take one of, the, one of the projects, click clone, and it will be added to your profile easily like this. So you click clone, create project, it will give some name, takes you straight to the designer, of the project and then if you go back to the dashboard you will have the project within your projects so i have it here now as a jan's radical project the easiest way here as well is to learn uh, by just pressing everything because uh, you are obviously not ruining any project you're basically just playing on your local host you can't ever ruin anything and i think that just by pressing everything is sometimes how i even uh, create some of the projects uh, to sort of realize what the what the relationships are within uh, within the different div blocks and everything. That brings me to a another part of this video, which is UI kits. If you don't know what UI kit is, uh, UI kit is a set of elements uh, which you can then take uh, from the UI kit into your project, and it will take all the properties which are matched uh, in the in the UI kit into your project. You can copy the whole thing or even you can copy a one type of text. You can copy a one section, uh, let's say header for your website and then you can create whatever you want. Uh, but you can also create the whole website using just UI kits and then sell it to your client. There are actually a couple of UI kits already on the clonable uh, within the showcase page. Uh, you can see here, for example, Lego work by, Dar by Dario. 
Uh, that's awesome UI kit for wireframes. Then there is a Cars 2.0, which is again for building landing pages. That's actually created by me. Uh, then there is one small with the cards. Then there is a Prospero UI kit uh, for building an e-commerce site or any kind of site in, ge in general, actually. Uh, if you just uh, copy the elements from there, they won't necessarily have to be used for e-commerce. Then there is Avocado uh, Webflow UI kit by Flowbase and probably even more will be coming in the future. So keep an eye on this section uh, because there is some really cool value which you can get and UI kits in general is something that can help you quickly without much of hustle uh, put your ideas out there uh, create wireframes or even the final website and I will leave some of them uh, in the description so you can always take a look at them uh, after you watch this video and let's look at the final resource chapter which is a curses Webflow itself provides an incredible list of video tutorials, but there are way more people creating now Webflow related content, people recreating famous websites, creating free video courses and tutorials, which you can take to learn more and you can jumpstart with these places. There is obviously the Webflow 101 crash course, which we already talked about. Webflow also have uh, a freelancer course where they take you across the whole journey from an idea uh, to actually selling the stuff to your client. Nelson is also uh, managing nicely his channel called Pixel Geek. On his channel, you can find some really advanced stuff, uh, recreating uh, the Apple sales uh, site for MacBook or any kind of really advanced uh, custom code stuff. And also some of the basics, which he's nicely with always enthusiasm uh, explaining. Uh, then we have a uh, Jose Ocando. Hopefully I'm not butchering your name. Jose is amazing at explaining in a lot of details, uh, really long tutorials and really nicely explaining all the details and how to create uh, really cool websites uh, with Webflow. Then we have a design pilot. Design pilot is actually doing a lot of stuff about design and etc. But he's also using Webflow to create uh, a course for beginners. So definitely check that as well. Then there is Flux, who is doing everything from freelance to graphic, but he's also really passionate about Webflow. And you can also check his videos. Uh, they are incredible. And the last but not least is obviously uh, my free YouTube course uh, for really beginners uh, to create the Before You Shine, which I was showing to you at the beginning of the video. And you can take this course on my YouTube channel as well. One thing I still haven't mentioned here is that the community around Webflow and the no code in general is incredibly skilled, kind and always happy to jump on call or happy to help you with any ideas. So don't be shy. Uh, feel free to reach out to any of us. We will be always happy to help you. And the last bit, uh, which I need to cover here is a forum, which is a Webflow forum where you can always put your questions or basically anything which you're struggling with and the community will be eager to help you with any kind of issue you're having. And the last bit, which we need to cover is obviously a pricing, which seems to be somehow confusing to, uh, to a lot of people, uh, but in general, it's, uh, it's fairly simple. You start with a free plan, uh, which covers a two pages. So you can play around with these forever before you decide uh, to actually go with the paid plan. Once you are ready to commit, you scroll down here, select the light plan, which gives you access to 10 projects. And once you will be super happy with Webflow, you can go unlimited uh, for 35. But for start, for 10 projects, which I don't even have yet, and I'm using Webflow for two years, uh, you can still stick to light and it will give you access to everything. This, this part is obviously for the site plan, which is the hosting. You don't need it at first. Uh, you can always create the website uh, using, the, using the account plan. But once you want to put it live and using your custom domain, so let's say janlosser.com, you will obviously need a basic plan or a CMS plan. Depends on if you're using CMS or not and you will be stick to either $12 per month or either $16 a month. One important thing to say here is that this is per one project. So you will be adding the hosting to your site through here, uh, creating the, the custom domain. So this is per one project. So if I want to make the Prospero UI kit live on my domain, I will have to pay 16 or $12. But if I want to have three domains live or three projects live, I need to pay the hosting three times. I hope that makes it uh, super clear. So that was the pricing and that's it for this video. Uh, 
I think my only final advice is always take on any projects which you are might be afraid of and try to create them in any way because I think that's the easiest way and the best way to learn anything new. And from now on, uh, good luck. Let me know in comments if you have any questions about Webflow or message me on Instagram or Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, consider giving a subscribe. And uh, in the next videos, I'll be looking at uh, creating my new portfolio, my store, and I'll be covering a lot about Dribble, Behance, and basically trying to uh, help you start with this whole thing about design and really diving deep into a portfolios and Webflow. Cool. I'll see you in the next video and for now, bye-bye.